this is Brother Nia from NABS TV, from the National Association of Black Supplementary Schools. And today we're interviewing uh, the founder of the Kana Foundation. Uh, please introduce yourself. Okay. Well, greetings, Brother Nia. Um, I'm uh, Yain Zinga, um, or in Zinga Kana Mvita, <laughs> or my corporate... Uh, Western name, Angie Brooks. Um, so I am the director of the Kana Foundation and uh, we founded the foundation 1997. And um, yeah, that's a brief introduction. Oh, great. Wow, 1997, pretty good. Uh, was, was there anybody else involved in setting up the Kana Foundation? I keep calling it Kana, Kana uh, Foundation. Kana, yes. Anybody else um, involved with setting up the Kana Foundation? Absolutely. Um, Brother Jegna? Jenna, yeah? Yes, um, Mama Vita. So Brother Jegna um, was the director of um, history and culture. Mm -hmm. Mama Vita is the parenting coach. Um, Marsha Morrison is the head of music and performance. And who else was there with us? I think, I think that was the main people. Okay, brilliant, wow. Some good departments you got there. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so, we, I mean, we met before. Yes. We met back in, when was it? Was it about 2006? I can't even remember, remember when. Before but... I set up NABS. Uh, yeah. Actually, no, 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 it wasn't. It was, it was probably um, 2003 or four, 2004 because I came to your Sunday school, your supper yeah. school, which runs on a Sunday, and That's the right. Kana Foundation still runs on a Sunday. Mm. Right, um, my ex, whoa, my ex, whoa, oh, I can't say it. that <laughs> woman I divorced oh. uh, was, <laughs> was um, <laughs> at university and she was doing a, a um dissertation on um uh African heritage children and she did a update of the Clark and Clark experiment with the black oh. dolls. Yes. Now, when Clark and Clark did it, he did it with one type of black child and they all gave the same kind of answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She, her updated version had two types of African heritage children. Those who did not attend an African heritage supplementary school and weren't too high on cultural issues within their family sector. Mm -hmm. And then she came to your supplementary school and interviewed children who attended a supplementary an African heritage supplementary yeah. school who had a foundation on of African history and knowledge yes. and the answers were totally polarized because yes. the answers that she received from the school I think it was a school in Camberwell uh, that had about 60 70 percent African heritage children in school mm -hmm. the, when they asked the question of um, which doll do you want to play with which doll was the most beautiful they all chose the white doll and even the last question of which doll looks like you, children remembering which doll received all the negative answers, five of the children actually chose the white doll as looking like them. Mm. And when the same questions were posed to the children in your school, who had um, a foundation of African heritage uh, education, complete opposite. The black doll was the one they chose for the beautiful, the best one they want to play with. And it was uh, no hesitation whatsoever in the black doll mm -hmm. looking like them. Yeah. So that's the that's why I like to promote our own supplementary schools because we get that foundation, which is what you did at the Kana Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you for that. I remember the experiment very well. I remember um, um, the student asking me, "What can I predict the results?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> I said, "99 percent of the children." will choose the black doll as the doll who looks at them as a doll who's the most intelligent, most beautiful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but one child may will choose the white doll as the best doll. And yeah. um, it, it was just as as I said really um, and I know the reason why. Yes. Yeah, you know, if you get, a, um, I mean, this is the early intervention. I, I insist that we must have for our children. And, and you get an early foundation of self-knowledge, self, of your history and self-love. 
Because when you're mm -hmm. seeing what we can and are doing in our own community uh, with people that represent us, look like us, it does build up your self-esteem. Absolutely. Absolutely does. There's no question about it whatsoever. And that experiment proved it. It's a yeah. shame that uh, um, that experiment can't be found. I said to her, get it published. Go to the Voice newspaper. Go to any black you know, newspaper or, or media there is. Get it published. Get it published. Just, but it just didn't happen. Hopefully another student out yeah. there will go and do it again. Yes, yes. Because this information happens, needs to be yeah. reiterated. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, in fact, I want to also um, commend Brother Jegner, or Siba Dez, as we used to call him, uh -huh. um, yes, um, Siba Jegna, um, for his work uh, at Ghana School. And he, his work enabled the children, uh, us working together, enabled the children to have that high self-esteem because he taught African history prior to colonization. So basically classical African history. So mm -hmm. we don't begin at um, slavery, which is the end of our history. We begin at the beginning as anyone would a normal story. Mm. Um, well, history never stops. <laughs> yes, <fine. laughs> never so stops. We, begin, we begin with the kings and the queens, the emperors and the empresses, science, maths, um, literature, and the art. art and mm. so on we big the scientists the inventors and also yes i knew there was somebody that had slipped my mind i was having a senior moment um brother michael from black inventors and scientists oh yes michael williams we had a brother yes that's right i'm sure michael <laughs> has received an award from nabs and also des I've received awards yes. from them, yes. part of the NEMS yes. awards. Yeah, sorry, probably went whilst I was bringing up children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually. So, um, in setting up the school, where, where, where were where were you, um, where were you teaching from? Which area? So Tottenham, Tottenham. In Tottenham. We began in Tottenham. I, when I when when we came to you using the the Marcus Garvey Library. That's right. That's where we began. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, with, with a lot of separate schools, premises is always an issue. What kind of issues are you having to deal with? You're trying to find premises. Uh, were or at the moment? Both. Okay. So, initially, um, our start was interesting because um, we... Uh, I'm going to tell you the real story about the school, yeah? So, I'm going to tell you why it started, how it started, yeah, yeah. if that's all right. I know we haven't got lots of time. We've got time. But... Um, I, I was working, I'd moved from Tottenham, I was brought up in Tottenham. I moved from Tottenham when I got married to, we moved to Essex and we were working there, I was working there for 10 years and um, did some really good work there. I was actually headhunted and I didn't really apply for jobs, so I was headhunted to run modern languages departments and um, to cut the story very short, um, in the last school I worked in there, um, they, there was, basically I ended up taking them to court for um, racism and breach of contract. So after four and a bit years, I won. So the case, if you to reference it, is um, Bennett, which was my married name, versus Essex County Council A.L. You can look it up. It sets a legal precedent in protecting um, employees from racism, discrimination, abuse, etc. At, at work. Yeah. So after that, we returned to London and we and that's when it occurred to me that if I as a reasonably intelligent um, adult can experience the things I experienced at the hands of um, people, racists essentially at work. Um, people who for no reason or uh, for no reason uh, for no reason just decided to uh, destroy <laughs> me and my work um, and thank god they didn't succeed but um, I thought well what can the children be experiencing? 
The children, they can't even articulate what's going on. They don't get it because they're so innocent. And um, yeah, so we looked at what was going on and we set up the supplementary school for our children. Absolutely. That was brilliant. Well done. Well done for doing it. And, and you're still going. Still going on yeah. to 1997. Yeah, well, we are still going, but um, it's changed its format because, as you said, premises is an issue. Um, mm. So, in, I mean, we were very, very blessed. Yeah, so the, the real, what really happened, and again, you may not, it's very difficult to believe, but it's, it's true. So I will tell you what really happened. So one second, let me get a, I don't think this is high enough. So what happened was... Um, I came back to London and had uh, and decided I wasn't going to do anything more with education. Had no, not at all, because it had hurt me. Education wow. had hurt me, mm. and um, I do believe in the Most High. And I remember saying to the Most High, "That's it. <laughs> nothing more to do with education. Nothing more to do with the community either, because that's another story for another mm. day, <laughs> as we all know." And um, but I had a lot of people, strangers, coming up to me, just starting to start talking to me. They started talking about, about education, stage of our race, et cetera. Even, you know, white people, Muslims, Africans, Caribbean. Still, I said to my friend, I felt like Jonah, you know, <laughs> and, I realized, and I realized, well, mm, I remember what happened to Jonah. So I actually, went into meditation and prayer and I, I said, well, no, okay. I, I know you, I know that you want me to do something to do with um, education and with our community. Um, what, you know, you know, I'm sorry. I said all that, ter those terrible things. <laughs> I told you what I'm not going to do, but you know, show me what you want me to do and I'll do it. And so when I got up, um, I took pen and paper and just it just all came out code of conduct ethics everything so I can't even claim <laughs> that the school is my idea I think it's an idea um whose time it's you put together well and it didn't come from me yeah, yeah it didn't come from me and that's and, and that's that's probably yeah everything happened as as the plan we were given even we were going to go to the uni when when we got to the uni Siba Dez said I remember you saying we're going to end up at um, the university. Yeah. Which, which university is that? Institute of Education, University of London. Uh -huh. Oh, and yes, became, I remember that one, yes. And we yes. became part of a faculty. They asked us to be part of a faculty. Excellent. And we did. And we were was that on a Sunday as well? That was on a Sunday as well. That Amazing. was on a Sunday as well. And um, it, it attracted the attention of uh, BBC Radio 4, um you know but, but basically as in 2006 you did an interview interview in 2006 yes BBC. that's right that's right and they came down to the uni as well and interviewed our gifted and talented children you know mm. yeah. so speaking of the children and the parents what kind of feedback have you been getting from the children and parents over the years oh well the children i don't know some of the most amazing teaching experiences i've had and I've been teaching since 1984, um, so a while ago. Um, some of the most interesting uh, and, and, and uh, you know, commendation I've had have been from the children and the parents, you know. But for me, the fact that we could change lives by giving children improves, improved choices mm -hmm. is the most amazing thing. And uh, in one of the articles written by the Institute of Education about our school, they said, um, there was, they mentioned a young man called Zabian who was 14. And when he came in, he was very, very shy. Um, but because they had to write an essay um, to, to come in, we could tell from his essay that he was extremely intelligent. And this young man, it was just quiet. He's just the sort of child. He's good. He's quiet, and he'll slip through the cracks in school. Yeah. Not careful. 
-hmm. so um uh, so i remember we worked with him and and i remember the day when one child asked me a question or us a question i think was either des and myself and before we could reply we heard zabian from the back of the classroom just start answering the question so as a teacher i know that our job is done it's done <laughs> because he was there, he was ready, you know, and he just came, went on from strength to strength, went to university and, you know, so on. Beautiful yeah. success story. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So um, we're going through a bit of a pandemic at the moment. We're in 2020, one, come up to 2022 in a bit of a pandemic. So um, uh, are you in the premises at the moment? Yes, we are. So what has happened, we've, we've uh, taken a sabbatical from the mm -hmm. Institute of Education, we've been on sabbatical for a little while. Um, and just before the pandemic, we set up uh, in uh, Tottenham again. To so basically it was taking the school back to its roots, taking it from, because the Institute is in central London, which is fine, but you know, now they have congestion charging. Uh, it's difficult for the parents who can't afford it in first place to, to come into central London. Mm. It's not as accessible to the, the cohort of children we're looking for as um, in the city of London. So we've brought it back to Tottenham. Uh, we were going to relaunch it in the April, Easter, we had an Easter program. Um, pandemic hit in, lockdown hit in March, you know. Yeah. So what we did was to um, go online, Right. And we've been working online, but we haven't actually launched it yet. So we plan to launch it in the new year. Okay, well, give me a shout when that happens and I'll publicise it around the world for you. That's what oh, I hope to see you for. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Great. So you, you, you'll, be, you'll be having an online premise, pres, uh, presence. Yes. So you can yes. attract people from anywhere. Quite frankly, anywhere. So absolutely anywhere. anywhere. Absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, that's your outlook. Also, um, any further outlooks for the future? There's some really exciting um, plans, but obviously I can't talk about them yet until they, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. But there's some really ex exciting plans. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, say. let me know when you're ready. Definitely, definitely. Part, and it involves, I mean, some of them involve partnering, you know, which yeah, yeah. I remember when I first met you, Brother Nia, are you that was a suggestion that you you made to me and um the time probably wasn't right then but i think the time is right now so thank you for that oh you're welcome <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an unbroken record <laughs> we need to be working together and start recreating the wheel yeah you know what i mean but excellent thank you very much for your time ya and zinger aka angie brooks <laughs> Founder of the Kana Foundation. Thank you very much for your time and best wishes, best wishes for the future. And NABS is here to support you as much as we can. So until your website is up, there is a link uh, to the Kana Foundation on the NABS online directory on the NABS website. So that she can be contacted and details will be coming up on the, on the screen as well. So thank you very much for your time and best wishes to you all. Best wishes. Thank you, Brother Neil. Thank you. Respect.